Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about surveillance, namely should you be buying Synology or QNAP for a surveillance NAS in 2019. Okay, so much like my videos, I am going to focus on these two brands, pretty much. Largely because they are pretty much the go-to, top two, shared pole position, wherever you want to look at it, NAS brands right now for both home and business users. A lot of times people have been for surveillance needs, going for things like HP servers and large-scale DVR and NVR systems, but the versatility and ease and access of a NAS, and particularly from QNAP and Synology, is very hard to overestimate. Now, if you are looking for a great surveillance solution, as well as lots of network access and backing up and making the most of a NAS purchase, ch chances are you've been looking at these two brands and both of them arrive with great surveillance solutions. Now, I'm gonna talk about what's the same before what I really talk about the difference between them. First and foremost, they both arrive with a very comprehensive and feature-led surveillance platform. In the case of QNAP, you've got the QVR Pro software and their own software surveillance station. Synology of their own called Surveillance Station, a very popular name by the look of it. And both of these brands and their platforms are available now anywhere from one to two bay all the way up to enterprise level rack mounts. And the software arrives free with your NAS, so insofar as free it's included. Now, this surveillance software for both of them gives you you know, unparalleled levels of support. They both arrive with a whole control deck that you can utilize with multiple camera inputs from depending on the hardware of the NAS you go for, can support anywhere from 20 to 40 to 80 cameras and more in a business environment. They all arrive with support for functionality and features on cameras such as motion, cap, um, motion tracking, facial tracking in some cases, identification tracking, which again we'll talk about later in the year from Synology, as well as a whole host of night vision and alert systems for SMS, emails, push alerts and more. Alongside this, they also arrive with a whole host of mobile applications for both Synology and QNAP. And both of them arrive with not just uh, the multitude of cameras supported, but a camera licensing system whereby when you get the NAS, you can add some cameras, but once you want to add more cameras, like a larger scale, more business-led camera coverage, you will have to pay a little extra for licenses. Now, going forward, I will touch on that. The thing about the licensing, I genuinely think it's a good idea. I've talked about it in other videos and I'll touch on it very quickly. Um, I think the, the, including this enterprise level surveillance software is a real big thing to include in a NAS given the amount of things you get in terms of software from both of these brands. And a lot of business users might end up using the surveillance platform to protect their business. And they'll use it to a far greater extent than home users and they would demand this enterprise level support. Now, in order to keep things fair, the idea that you get a bunch of camera support for free included in the software is a great thing, but if business users are gonna use it protect their, protecting their business interests, and they're gonna you know, put things around like insurance and more around this, I think it's important that they should pay a little more than everyone else, and the way they've levied this system is with licensing. And both brands have approached the licensing thing in a slightly different way that we'll talk about in a bit. And uh, the other thing that makes these very similar is this uh, network surveillance and internet surveillance platform, this MVR that you can create out of your NAS, is accessible over the network and over the internet via mobile applications, desktop client applications, and more. So it's incredibly similar in the way they've gone about it uh, in terms of form. But it's the way you can interact with your camera and the, uh, your cameras in your surveillance platform, and indeed, the, the aim, uh, the, the target audience of the surveillance software is what separates these two brands. Now, the pros and cons, if we look at QNAP. Now, with QNAP surveillance platform, they arrive with these two programs, Surveillance Station, the older of the two, and their brand new, shinier, flashier version, which is QVR Pro. Now, QVR Pro is very enterprise-led. It arrives with eight camera licenses, and you will need a slightly more powerful NAS to get this thing up and running, more likely um, an Intel-based CPU, definitely a 64-bit chip. Um, this software arrives with client applications and a whole host of internal apps to um, configure it and adapt it along with your existing surveillance systems, maybe like um, automatic doors and alert systems as well. Um, now, their software is a little bit more technical of the two. You will need a little bit more now and understanding of network appliances to take advantage of it. But that said, 
the, the support you've got on a hardware level and software, of course, is far greater. You can connect USB cameras to your NAS and then adapt them into surveillance cameras for the software. On top of that, the surveillance platform itself can support a greater range of cameras too. You'd think they'd support exactly the same cameras, but they really don't. The amount of cameras available for the QNAP platform does seem to be that pinch higher. And a lot of the hardware and software appliances match together greater. So the QNAP platform, although a lot more enterprise, particularly the surveillance station app, does cover a little bit, a few more of the hardware um, applications of some of these cameras from more enterprise level com companies like Axis and some of those Rio Link external cameras that we talked about in previous videos. In terms of downside, there's of course that requirement for a little bit more technical knowledge. Two, currently you can't view the cameras via the web browser. I had a lot of difficulties with that installing um, a few things uh, via Chrome uh, plugins and flash blasts. So in the case of QBR and Surveillance Station, they highly recommend that you install the client application on a desktop interface. Actually, while I think of it, there is another advantage. QNAPs, the majority of them, arrive with HDMI ports and USB. So you can create a standalone surveillance platform on that NAS that boots directly into Surveillance Station with all the NAS back in for your backups and your media and more. So again, if you prepare to learn a little bit more, a QNAP is a solid choice for your surveillance platform. Although it should be said that although the price is a little lower, that money you can effectively be lost in learning and time spent adapting to that system. Now, Synology of the two of them is the far more chewable user-friendly option. It might not seem as diverse as QNAPs, and you know they have far fewer options with HDMI and USB. In fact, I think there's only two Synology NASs out there that have keyboard video mouse support for a standalone NAS, but their software is better. That's where they win, the software. Because not only can you look at it via client applications and of course the mobile applications that you can on the QNAP, but on top of that, you can view it in the web browser and all of those cameras via that control. It, it feels more responsive. I, I believe it uses a better HTML. I don't hold me on that because I don't know too much about that side of things. But a downside, they have fewer licenses. Almost all Synology NASs arrive with just two camera licenses. Their software is very, very, very good. But those those two software licenses that's pretty depressing even for surveillance station a lot of QNAPs arrive with four uh, so the QNAP has got either four or eight licenses and Synology only chucking in two bit of a downer but their mobile applications are better you can convert a mobile phone into a, an IP camera for your surveillance station NAS very quickly over the network and I believe on the internet but that's a bit spotty. Another thing you can do with Surveillance Station for Synology is you can stream via, uh, via YouTube, which I know on the face of it doesn't seem that exciting. But look at it another way. If you've got a cameras being dedicated around your office or your home network, and you need to be able to share that footage in some sharp, quick, easy form, live streaming from it can be very, very useful indeed. And I know if you're doing a launch event or if you're doing something where you need to promote something, the idea of repurposing cameras in a live streaming capacity can be very useful. And I know for a fact that I have utilized this very camera right now, which is um, a Converse device that can be that can use that live streaming application. And then I can live stream via surveillance station and still maintain the picture quality, which is pretty bloody impressive. Um, but apart from that, when it comes to these two brands, what you're getting is Synology, you pay more overall in almost every sense of the word in terms of the software, the licenses, the hardware you're going to use, you know, and, and, and the camera support. But you do have a smoother, easier to use platform. And for a number of you, that's going to be the deciding factor. QNAP, on the other hand, it costs you a little less. You require a little bit of technical now, but you'll get more camera licenses. And if you're not going to be doing anything, you know, to mad advanced or that live stream thing or you want to utilize the advantage of those usb cameras qnap is very much going to be the one for you hopefully throughout this video there's been some overlays of some of my coverage of the respective surveillance platforms to give you some idea of the user interface but that has been synology versus qnap for surveillance i hope this helped you i look forward to seeing you in another video don't forget to click like and subscribe at the end because this video and most of the videos on this channel are supported by your contributions, or your retention and your watching. I don't have a PayPal and I don't go for Patreon or anything like that. I need your subscriptions to keep this channel going. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.